All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Gigi Inspire. Uh, this is the podcast for entrepreneurs. I, I am excited about my guest today, Dr. Heather Arwad. Uh, this is a really exciting day because it's funny. Um, she, I don't know, I don't know her perspective, but I saw her online doing an interview. I think it's a, a news of some kind, and I was like, I want to talk to her. And so I, I feel like I kind of stalked her. Like I was like, <laughs> okay, hey, and I looked her up on Facebook, and I messaged her, and she was like, okay. And then I messaged her again and I messaged her again. So, you know, it's just, a, I guess the idea is persistence. You know, I just sought her out because I really was inspired by her story. So, well, it's fun Welcome. for me to meet with you too, because we both started in healthcare and then kind of have evolved a little more into the business world. And it's yeah. super fun. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really what struck a chord with me because, you know, I left medicine over 10 years ago and I don't come across a lot of people with that same experience. Mm -hmm. Although I feel like there are a lot of people in medicine that are like, how can I get out? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Sadly. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so I just, you know, I just felt an, an immediate, you know, connection. I was like, I have to talk to her because I need, I need other people that are for two reasons. You know, it's, it's a selfish reason for me because it's always good to find somebody who kind of has the same mindset as you. But I really also felt like there are other practitioners out there that need to know that you could take a step outside if you chose. Yes. And, you know, and obviously, you know, I want to talk about, you know, your practice, but also what you're doing now, you know, uh, Dr. Awad is trained in, in family medicine and you have this, this innate ability to just show how genuinely you care for people. And so it, it, it really comes across very strongly and I, it's, it's really incredible, but you're someone who's now kind of shifted and is training professional women, how to be better with their eating habits, you know, yeah. make better choices, you know, like weight loss, sugar detox expert, you know, mm -hmm. um, actually I'm going to put this on the screen right now. Uh, Dr. Awad has a, has a, let me put it up there, um, has a healthy, holiday eating guide uh, that's at vibrantmd.com. So Vibrant MD is her podcast that she came out with recently. How long ago? Um, we're only on like the 15th episode. So oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you know, it's about healthy eating habits, how to make better choices, you know, and I would really love for you to share kind of like your intent, but, you know, she's a mom of four, you know, she's already given me some great advice you know, for my girls. And it's, we had a whole conversation about that the other day. My daughter was like, I thought it was today. I could have sugar. And I was like, no, it was yesterday. You missed it. She <laughs> I'm so glad that worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, we're rolling it out. Yeah. <laughs> we're rolling yeah. it out. We're going to see how the kinks go. Right. Um, right. But it's just, it's just good to, to be talking to someone who really cares and, and wants to be able to help other people. So, you know, yeah. tell us. I want to make it about. easy for people. I do want to make it easy for people. Like I, we have that holiday guide and I, you know, I've, I've got it right here. It's like four oh, sheets nice. and it gives you like samples on how to eat, to plan ahead for the holiday. Cause you know, I, I find a lot of people, the biggest mistake we make is, um, we go into a holiday not wanting to overeat and we just stand there going, I hope I don't overeat. But actually if you plan ahead, yeah, it really gives you a chance of success for that. So that's um, people in my program do that. Um, I did it for Thanksgiving. I've got a friend who's using these sheets for Hanukkah this week. I'll be doing it at Christmas time. Um, it just really, you know, gives you easy ways to write it out and think ahead of time because uh, holidays, you almost always know what the food's going to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, Thanksgiving, you know that your family's going to have turkey and mashed potatoes. And um, so you can really plan ahead really easily. And it takes the stress out, you know? So yes. I love that. That's good. I mean, because I, you're right. You, you kind of have the staples. Thanksgiving is like the one meal. I think that most people do the staples. I talked to a couple of people that are yeah. like, no, we like to change it up and, and do yeah. different things, you know, and, oh, and, uh, and try try different things, but but then also you have the people that are like, well, what if we try it and we don't like it, and then Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner is ruined, you know? Right, so, right. So it yeah. is it, it it makes sense to kind of plan. I'm kind of curious just about the podcast as I was, you know, unless I was doing my research, not stopping research, you know, I yeah, yeah. I stumbled across your podcast and I thought, oh, this is so cool. So 
tell us, you know, kind of how you came up with the idea. Sure, sure. I'm I'm really passionate about healthy eating. Um, I'm not crazy strict because I like I like frozen pizza and things like that. But um, but I I love healthy eating and I and it just makes you feel so good. And I think that people like information, even tidbits about things. Um, and I find people are curious about it. So I decided to put that in a podcast because and my my episodes are short. They're you know like usually like ten to fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and and I like to just put in things about um, you know, kind of random stuff, honestly. You know, I like uh, I went to a conference a couple of years ago, and I would do an episode about this. Every doctor on the stage who was talking about healthy eating, um, they all ate like a cup of blueberries every day, and I was like, well, you know people you know i i was so excited to find that out i started adding berries into my daily routine and i and so i put that in the podcast and people were like oh this is super interesting you know they got a lot of great feedback about that so stuff that people you know sometimes the research is just so overwhelming mm -hmm. um that sometimes having a little bite-sized chunk of things i think helps just to get some information yeah. For sure. I think that that makes a big difference because, you know, we're in this, I feel like the attention span has shortened even so much since the pandemic that, you know, we can absorb like such a small amount of content in, in, in one place. So having, and I, it's funny that, cause I was like, I put in some like little ticks, tips and tricks and hacks and things like that to be able to like help you. And that's a great one. You know, I love blueberries. My kids love blueberries. So I think that would be a really easy one you know, mm -hmm. to incorporate into the diet. So like, that's actually my next question. So what are your, like some, some tips and tricks for busy, busy people, especially busy moms, because, sure. you know, frankly, you know, moms are the ones that, you know, we're like the, the parent and we're making sure that the dinner gets done. Even if we're not cooking it, we're still making sure that it gets taken care of and professionalism mm -hmm. and this and that, and, you know, and looking amazing at the same time. So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Doing it all. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> it's totally fine. You know, and my, my husband, I used to tell him, I'm like, you don't understand mom guilt. He's like, yes, I do. I'm like, okay, well, I guess there's dad guilt, but there's like kind of like this huge weight of stuff that's all stuff that's yeah. our responsibility. Like my daughter walked out of the house looking like completely unmatched the other day. And I'm like, they're going to think that I just let her <laughs> just go. So anyway, so yeah. how do you stay on track? What are some tips? Um, you know, some of the tips and tricks I have this year I got my husband to take over one meal and I never judge what he makes. So that was something that was great. I took off my plate mm -hmm. um, and during the weekdays. Uh, the other thing that I, I do is I, I do use shortcuts. Like my sister-in-law and I both cook, but we fight over which shortcut is better. Um, so almost every meal starts with you chop an onion and you saute it in the pan and then whatever else mm -hmm. goes on it. And at some point there's garlic that goes in. So for me, I like sitting and chopping that onion. It's just like a Zen thing that starts the meal for me. And, but I use jar garlic. And then my sister-in-law is like, no, no, no. They have chopped frozen onions. You just pour them in the pan and then you chop the garlic yourself. So you, you kind of decide what's going to work for you. And even mm -hmm. like on the weekend, if I'm making tacos, I like to sit and chop the peppers up. If it's going to be a Wednesday night taco night or Tuesday tacos, then it's, um, you know, I buy the pre-cut. So there's that. Okay. Then I also do like to just make, like if I'm making a dish of, you know, a curry or a stir fry or something, I make a lot. And so that there is leftovers. You know, a few days later, we'll have leftovers. it with, yeah, we'll have it with a super easy salad, you know, cause you can just buy the pre-made, you know, the pre-washed greens, you pull those out you put some vinaigrette and then it's almost a new meal or it's lunch, you know, if you want to take healthy lunch with you, if you have somewhere to heat it up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just make a lot more. And I know some people don't eat leftovers, but our family does. So, I, you know, I, I have a, a few people over the course of my life that have told me that they just don't eat leftovers. And I was always like, <laughs> like, how, how do you have a fresh meal every time? Like either you have a ton of time or you're not eating well because yeah. You, you end up, you end up like, I don't have enough time to always make a meal 
right? So then you end up ordering food, which you don't always know what's in it. It's got a lot of things in it that makes it taste good, but it's not necessarily healthy for you. So I just remember thinking, huh. Um, do you yeah. also talk to people about meal prep? Oh, I do some. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not, you know, I, I look at some of the meal prep people on YouTube and I think, I don't want to spend all, all of Sunday doing this, you yeah. know? So um, I do a mix of it. Like it's, it's fall. So I'll make a big pot of chili or soup on the weekend. And then, and that's my meal prep. Or I'll think about what my lunches are going to be. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, that's something that you have to kind of grab quick sometimes. Um, but otherwise I don't, I don't do the whole afternoon meal prep, all the meals. Um, I do tend to write out what I'm going to, what we're going to eat for mm -hmm. the week. Um, and that, that's kind of as far as I go with it. So I think you can customize it to what works for you. You know, some people love the taking away the stress of having it all made on Sunday or whatever mm -hmm. your weekend day is. Um, but I'd rather, you know, sort of plan it out, but I know the days that I'll be home to stand there and cook. And I know the days that I won't be able to cook. And so that that stuff's made ahead of time. And also those days where you just don't feel like it. Yes. You, just don't, you just don't want to. I have those days where I'm like, yeah. you know, I'm all ambitious, you know, at the beginning of the weekend, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get this done. And that Sunday night at like seven o'clock, I'm like, I just, <laughs> just wasn't feeling it this time, you know? Um, right, right. But, I but then also really... know what, what your backups are too, right? Like, yeah. you know, there's uh, Indian takeout is really, you know, you, if you know some healthy choices there, that's great. Or, you know, we like, uh, I kind of like the noodles and company zoodles, those zucchini noodles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you gotta just, if you have like a backup or sometimes it's something in the freezer too, right? Um, yeah. That you either made before or, you know, is super easy to throw together. And I'll do that yeah. too. And I'm thinking about certain things that I want to make, but I can prep certain parts of it before and freeze it and what have you. So um, how do you, because obviously when you're coaching people, you have to coach them based on them, right? It's all like custom yes. and tailored to them, right? So yes. how do you coach them on consistency, like doing certain things? Because I know, like I, I've tried to do the meal plan and write it all out and it's lasted about a week. And then the next weekend, I'm like, oh, I got to do that whole thing again. So how do you coach them on being consistent with the habits? Well, in, in, when I'm coaching, we always plan uh, the day before what we're going to eat the next day. So you can do that as a week if you want, or you can do it day to day. Um, so that's, that's one of the things we just pick up as a habit, honestly. Um, that's an important habit in my program mm -hmm. uh, because it just – it does give you success. And then we do have the, the backups. And even in my program, we get, I give them a restaurant guide for kind of these fast casual places for what, what you can get that's um, doesn't have sugar in it at Chipotle and Panera and all the places where you're okay. kind of stuck. You know, you might feel stuck and, and you're like, Oh, I can't do it. And it's like, well, I got the restaurant guide. I can pull it out. And and, and this stuff is available online to everyone. You know, you don't have to be in my program to get this, but the nutrition guides are there. Um, my fitness pal will tell you if there's added sugar in in um, restaurant foods or they mm -hmm. all, um, most of the restaurants do have on their websites a page that tells you that. So you can make your own guide. You know, the I, I'm not sponsored by any restaurant, but Chipotle is almost everything has no sugar, except for the one that's, there's a honey something vinaigrette and that's obvious that it has mm -hmm. you know, a sweetener in it. Um, but almost everything else has no sugar in it. So it's super easy. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's good it's to, know to know that you have, 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 have those options out there. And I think also people need to be more aware of the fact that it's not just, yes, the information is out there, but as a coach, you're able to help guide them through those things. And I think a lot of times people need that part more than ever because the resources are there. And if they took the time, yes, but the coaching is what people really helps them, you know, stay accountable, you know? Yeah. And we also coach about the, the difficult things like, you know, some of us live in families that food is love, you know? And so they want you to take their love 
And you're like, like, I do not want to eat that because eat that. Like, you know, how do I, how do I accept that love without eating a bunch of unhealthy food or, yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> this is interesting because you kind of made a, a, a pretty big shift, you know, making a shift from getting away from patient care. I mean, family medicine, you know, I was trained as a physician assistant. I did my family med rotation. I remember the myriad of things that would come through the door, like all of the, all the different patients, all the different ailments, so many different things. So, you know, one of the things that was really hard for me, and I kind of want to, I guess, shift gears a little bit. One of the mm -hmm. things that was really difficult for me and accept, for me to accept in medicine was that it was so focused on treatment versus prevention, you know? So I'm kind of curious what were maybe some of the challenges that you had in medicine or, you know, maybe things that you might want to see change. Yeah. I, I felt the same way. I mean, that was a, you know, I really had a kind of preventive medicine bent to my practice all the time. And some people, and also, you know, you, they shorten the time, they keep shortening the time of the visits, which really makes it difficult to talk about that stuff. Yeah. And then some people don't want it either. You know, like if, if I was visiting with a, a patient and they had high cholesterol, I'd be like, well, tell me what you eat for lunch. And so sometimes you could really make a big difference there with um, making a, a dietary change, you know, a, a lifestyle change. And some people, um, you know, you just didn't have the time to do that because they had so much going on that day. Or you had other people who were just like, don't talk to me about food. I just give me a pill. And I was, I'd be like, right. really? <laughs> okay. But, you know, I, I get it. We're, we don't all have the same, you know, values. So... <laughs> So yeah. it's, I think that's a hard, hard part. It was, it was hard for me to accept. And, you know, I think when I, when I was in medicine, concierge medicine was like just starting. Yeah. And so the idea of kind of shifting into that role and being the, you know, doing all of that for people and helping with the prevention and it was still really new, you know? Yeah. It's kind of a cool and idea if, it, if you find a practice that works for you. you yeah. Know, as a client, you know, it, it is a cool idea. Yeah. My dad actually is a, you know, concierge doc and he pays oh, cool. him like an, an annual fee and he sees him as many times as he wants. And he has a great relationship with them. And I was like, see, yeah, that, that's something that I could have done. Now I went the complete opposite direction and I was like, I'm just going to help people <laughs> prevent stress by helping them understand their money a little bit yeah, better. So good. Right? <laughs> just went a completely opposite direction. But, um, how are you kind of able to make that transition from seeing patients to becoming an entrepreneur? And was there like a, like a straw that broke the camel's back or was there something that you were like, I'm done. I have to go. You know, there's probably a mix. You know, I was working in nursing homes doing wound care um, during the first wave of the pandemic. And mm -hmm. as you can imagine, that was super stressful. Yeah. A lot of death, a lot of, um, you know, being covered head to toe all the time. And then when I, when we got done with the, um, we got the vaccinations, you know, it was a big party day at the nursing homes. Um, but then a couple of months later, I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really tired. You know, what else is there out there? Um, probably the biggest shift for me though, wasn't so much because I love my work, but um, I, I learned how to, by having my own coach, um, I learned how to have my own back better. Um, and that helped me move into being an entrepreneur. So I, mm -hmm. you know, as you remember, when it's medicine, you show up, there's a list of patients and you just der, 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 see them all. And yep. you don't really have to, um, you don't have to make your own schedule at all. And when you're an entrepreneur, you have to, it's not even just being motivated. It's just, you know, there's so many hours in the day. You've got family that it's your joy to, you know, take care of them and spend time with them. But also that's a lot of time. And just, I didn't before um, feel that I could really stick to doing all the things that needed to be done. Cause mm -hmm. I was a little bit too much just giving my time to other people. And now I've learned to, um, you know, to set my own schedule, which works really well. So I, I actually feel really present with my, when I'm with my family, but I also have the time where I'm working on my business and, and, and coaching my clients. So. That's huge. That so it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a snowball effect of eventually, you know what, I think I need to make this transition. 
you know? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Um, I think that medicine, there's a, there's a lot to be learned and gained and improved in medicine, but I think the people, the people you go into medicine because you care for others, you know, because most people, right. There's, there's some of the people that are like, I just want to make money. And that's, that's a very small percentage of the, of the population of people in medicine, but it's usually because they want to make a difference. Yeah. And you said something to me when we first talked that I really, I resonated with, because I remember seeing this movie, right? So, you know, maybe you can share with people kind of your perspective, because it, it had that same impact on me. Yeah. Well, the, make sure I can, you can still see me here. Um, The thing that got me into weight loss was uh, that movie, was thinking about that movie WALL-E, where you know, you got all the whole, the whole beginning part, which is so fun. And then the end, they go to the spaceship and there's, everyone is overweight, sitting in a chair that moves you so that no one walks. And then mm-hmm. there's a straw of a, some sort of sugary drink that, that just goes to their mouths. And the thing was that when I started working in nursing homes a few years ago, there were people like that in the nursing home. And that was super scary to me that we're already living in the day, <laughs> in the time of yeah. Wally, in that nightmare that you're kind of like, oh, that would never happen. And I was like, oh gosh, there are a few people in each nursing home living that exact life. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they want to live at home, but they can't, you know, get on and off the toilet without a lot of help um, because of their because they're overweight. And then they get um, the the other thing is that. Uh, everyone who is at that level and even people who aren't that overweight get diabetes. And, and as you remember, diabetes is just a, a disease that, that has so many uh, punishments with it. It hurts your heart. It hurts your brain. It hurts your uh, sexual function. It hurts your feet. Um, there's just so many um, problems with it that you really want to avoid. So that really inspired me um, when I learned more about weight loss and had my own weight loss journey to um, share this with other people. Yeah, it's huge. I remember when I was studying, I remember thinking they were like, it's a systemic issue. Like diabetes is a systemic issue. And I just remember thinking like, oh, okay, there's a ton of sugar. So it just gums up the works, everything. Right. And that was how I just learned it. Right. I, I just, my little like school hacks because I don't yeah, have the rest. It all your blood vessels. It affects Every, everything. Everybody. Yeah. So it affects perfusion. It affects, it affects everything. And so, you know, when you said that, when we spoke, I thought that is so true and it's really scary. And I remember seeing that movie and thinking like, that's where we're headed. And so I want to be able to help people, you know, I, I love working with people in medicine because that drive and desire to be able to help make people healthier is, is really key. You know, I went another route in the financial realm because I mm-hmm. felt like when your stress level is high, usually it's because of money. People stress eat, people, you know, the stress affects their body, it affects their functions, all of those things. And so I thought, you know, somebody told me last year during the pandemic, they said, you're still practicing medicine. You're still, you're just doing it in a different way. I love you know? that. And I so thought, true. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know that, you know, making that transition you know, to be, to become an entrepreneur, like I know I got a lot of pushback. I know a lot of people who, you know, I said, this is, I, I want to do this. I think this is really great. And they were like, you know, that's dumb. That's a terrible idea. You went to school for so long. It's such a shame. That was the one that like, this is an air quotes <laughs> in my mind for a long time. It's such a shame. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of curious for you, like, did you have, you know, people that kind of gave you some pushback or, you know, um, sure kind of weren't yeah. as positive as you would have liked? And especially about weight loss uh, for a number of reasons. One is the business people were like, it's oversaturated. There's, you know, don't go, right. don't do an online weight loss business. There's too much competition. It'll be terrible. And then I had um, even my my kids who are young adults were like, don't be diet culture, you know, I don't want you body shaming people. And I'm like, I am not body shaming people. I'm helping people with their health, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and to do this for the last time to find the new normal of eating, that's a healthy way of eating, that's food that they like. I was like, there's no body shaming and there's no diet culture in my program. You know, we don't, 
I, I've seen that other places and I don't like it either, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I got all that pushback, but I was just like, I know this is that people are going to want this. And I, and I, and I, I had developed at that point, the self-confidence, which in the coaching world, the definition of self-confidence is believing you can do something that you've never done before. And, and I had worked on that. And that is what I was like, I'm just going to go. Cause I know it's going to, I know it's going to work. And it has, you know, people yeah. are resonating with it. They want to, um, you know, we start in my program, we start talking about how you're going to eat maintenance on, on the first day. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's totally like, we're going to find your lane where you really love how you eat and you, and you have a normal weight. I think that's so good. I think that's so good because people, they do want to be healthier, you know, they really do, but they're, they're limited on time. And that's usually, you know, the, the biggest thing limited on time. Sometimes it's resources, but when you can find affordable ways to do it, you can find ways to be able to make it happen with the time allotted, you know, there's so many things that, that we all want to do. And usually time is the factor that we feel limits us. Oh, I don't have enough time to do that. You know, if we just shift things a little bit, mm-hmm. we can make the time for health. And I think overall, like looking, looking at, at the, the end game, you know, going to the nursing homes and seeing that, yeah, I'm sure it, it makes a big impact. I remember when I worked in, I worked in the nursing homes for a little bit and I did wound care. And I remember thinking like, I don't ever want to be in this position. I want, I want to be able to get up no matter what, you know? Right. Right. And so it, it really prompted me to make smarter choices and I am far and away. I'm, I'm, I've looked at your Instagram page, right. And I've looked at the, the, um, the recipes and things like that, which by the way, I thought, you know, what would be cool is to do like a, um, like an entrepreneur's cookbook. You know oh, I, mean? I love that idea. With the hacks, you know, and I thought, oh, yeah. maybe we can collaborate on that. I thought it would be a fun thing to do. I cool. was already thinking about it. And then I thought, oh, you know, would be a great person to collaborate with would be, would be you. Yeah, so, I would love that. Uh, so I'm kind of curious. Um, well, here, this is the, you know, my, my financial side. So in the financial field, like it's, it's very, as an entrepreneur, you know, what you see online is like, I become an entrepreneur and then I'm going to have a jet. That's not how it works, right? <laughs> it takes time. It's not like you get microwave success, right? So, you know, did you have financial concerns as you were going into becoming an entrepreneur and, and launching uh, Vibrant MD? Definitely. I definitely did. Because there is a beginning where you're, I mean, for 2021, this is my first year. And so definitely my expenses are above my profits this year um, or my my income. I do have a, a partner that also works um, so that, you know, that is a, a fallback. But also I'm at an age where I've paid off my student loans and um and I've also, uh, but I have also built up some savings. And part of that is from other um, streams of income. Like many years ago, we bought our first rental house. And um, and so that cash flow kind of helped with things like paying off the, the debt, uh, the student loan debt. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've left our mortgage. But, uh, you know, that's kind of what I did when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I might not have done it. You know, like in my early 30s, I might not have done it, but I see people doing it now. And there are ways, you know, the great thing about now, too, is, you know, I'm doing an online course and do online coaching because with the pandemic and the Internet, you know, there's an explosion of of information online. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of people, even in healthcare, talking about um, how to have, you know, other streams of income other than your work for money, healthcare job. And there are people talking about how to get out of debt and there are people talking about how to build a business. And there's, and there's a lot of free content that you can look at. And so you can decide who you want to work with uh, eventually, or just get ideas that spark ideas of your own. Um, And so all those things kind of come together and eventually, you know, like I said, it's hard for me to picture me having done this at 30, but there are people doing it at 30. And so, you know, it's, you know, 2021, it's a great year to explore all that free content that's out there to learn yeah. more about, 
you know, and you've got your, you know, your financial stuff, um, you know, to, to really learn about it and pay attention to it so that you can do something like this if you want. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is. It is an interesting time and a time where people need to, they need to consume content, but they need to be looking at what they can put out in the world, what value they can bring to others. And so, you know, I'm, I'm grateful when I come across people with, with your mindset, because it is something that is fearful for people. Like what is, what is going to happen? How's it going to be the uncertainty, you know, and that was pretty scary for me, but I just, I saw the writing on the wall. It was, 14 years ago when I was introduced to business and I, mm-hmm. I knew entrepreneurship was the way to go. I knew that it was going to be, I was going to, I personally was going to want more freedom, but I knew more and more people were not going to be wanting to stay within the confines of a job and yeah. a boss. And so financially, yes. I mean, at that point it was, it was fine. And for us, like we did, we struggled for a while. You know what I mean? We had to get good because when you're so used to, especially like coming from academia and you know, like you were saying, you go and you have these patients, you don't have to go market to these patients to show up. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're there. <laughs> so in the beginning I was like, well, I'm awesome. They should just come and want my help. Right. <laughs> right. Um, and it didn't work that way. And I think for a long time I was, I, I just kind of had this delusion that it was going to be really easy and, and it wasn't. And I think that's, something that deters entrepreneurs, you know, people that start a business and they're, you know, cause when you start something, it's like all rose colored glasses, everything's going to be fantastic. And the first sign of adversity or even the fifth sign of adversity, you're like, yeah. I don't know, maybe this isn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to yeah. be, you know, and failure's part of it, right? You have to try stuff and fail yeah. because there is no set way. I mean, my, the people that resonate with me, you know, I had to figure out how to how to find them, you know, and so I tried some things that didn't work. And um, so and, you know, a lot of, I think there are a lot of people who who step it down a little bit. I actually, you know, got started and a month later was done with my nursing homework. So I, I really mm-hmm. switched quickly. And it sounds oh, like you did oh, as quick. Well. Yeah, um, I only did there are a lot of people bit. that do, you know take a few coaching clients in the evening around weekends, you know, and then once it gets busy enough, then they cut back their day job to part time or, you know, or they start the podcast and start finding out where their audience is. And, you know, they, you know, you know what you want to do, but also you, you find out what people want from you yeah. and your expertise and, and having some listening time, you know, by just putting out some content yourself helps yeah. as well. Absolutely. And and we need to be able to put put more out to be able to bring value because that value is what brings people to you, it draws people to you. So they say, you know, look for your perfect prospect. I mean, I, I have an idea. I have my perfect prospect, but I also know that there are millions of people out there who need the help. And in medicine, we all need health. We all need, you know, um, my goal for 2022, I was I've been writing my business plan and it's all about health and wealth this year. Nice. You, oh, I love it. Wealth is a great thing, but if you don't have health, then it's a real problem. I <laughs> love that. That's so away. amazing. You know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's lot, our goal. And a lot of people need more than just a little, you know, a little specific thing. Like yeah. they don't need to just know how to invest regularly. They, there's a lot going on in our lives. Right. And, and I love that you have this whole thing that brings it together. Yeah. And we, we do it on a, on a pretty comprehensive level. And that's the thing, mm-hmm. like, I, I really look at my, my clients as like my extended family. You know, mm-hmm. I expect to speak with them year after year, you know, quarter mm-hmm. after quarter. And so that, that's something that, that I've really loved about business. But I'm kind of curious for you, like, what do you feel like your, your superpower, maybe your superpower in medicine and we're almost done. Um, I we're going long, but because um, <laughs> I love this conversation. So, what yeah. about like maybe your your superpower in medicine, and then how are you maybe translating that into the business world? You know, I was thinking that um, my super probably my two superpowers were empathy and collaboration. Because I really tried to work with people. Like if they're someone comes in and they, uh, you know, I had I'll just confess that I have some difficult family, extended family members who had then difficult interactions with their doctors. So that was kind of always in my mind. So I was like, wow. well, if you don't like your high blood pressure medicine, what don't you like? Let's try, let's try something that works for you. Let's find something that works for you. 
or or same thing with lifestyle things. So I do that in my in my course. Um, there are you can go to a weight loss course. It tells you exactly what to eat. And in my course, I say, well, what do you like to eat? You know, and let's let's map out how we how you lose weight eating the stuff that you already like to eat or that you already cook or you know mm -hmm. you know we I like to collaborate with people so that it's a really um, you know very customized uh, plan for them. The people I have in my program now eat wildly different things. Uh, some of them eat eating windows. Some of them eat you know three meals a day. Um, so I really I'm like, well, what do you you know, what do you want to do? What do you want to try? You know, and, and they're like, well, I really like, you know, I had one woman who was like, well, I really like chili. And I'm like, well, let's eat chili. Yeah. And, and she's like, I can eat chili. I'm like, yeah, you like chili. Let's eat it. It doesn't, you know, we made it without, she makes it without sugar and, and she eats chili and she's like, oh, I didn't know I could just eat things I like. And I'm like, you can definitely eat things you like. Yeah. <laughs> That's really That's nice though. Nice. To customize it. it has to be a custom fit for every person you know there's yeah. no there's no one size fits all yeah so i guess is it, i have a quick quick question just like kind of my my this or that i like to do this one um sure. so favorite drink hot or cold uh hot i love to drink tea during the day okay okay pc or mac i'm a mac user lifelong <laughs> okay okay I've, I've tried to make that transition. It's it's not so easy, but it's, it's hard. Every time I'm like, maybe I should. And I'm like, no, I, I don't think I should. Maybe I should. Um, so vacation spot, mountain snow, or like African safari, which would you pick? You know, that African safari is definitely on my bucket list. Yeah. I see the pictures okay. that people have gone. I'm like, oh, someday. It looks fun. It really looks fun. Um, and then, so when you have free time, like, what would you choose to do? Would you like, you know, take a drive, be alone? Would you, you know, go be social? Like what, what's your choice? You know, now that I work as an entre online entrepreneur, I've, I've been making time to get out and see my friends more, even more than I used to, because, yeah. um, because you spend a lot of time by yourself yeah. <laughs> or talking to people online. So, um, yeah. So I like to we go get together with my friends. And also I, I walk my dog. I got a, a, we got a pandemic pup and um, getting out and walking my dog has been my new joy over the last year. I just, it's the best. Yeah. It's just taking some time, I think, to uh, reflect, you know, you get so much during the pandemic, like it's some screen time and so much, you know, for me, like we were so busy, like, you know, emails and texts and this and that, and, you know, messenger and notifications and, all that stuff. So it just it was nice to be able to like unglue for a yeah. little bit. If you leave your and phone at home, nobody can get you. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like a novel concept. Like I remember when I was a kid, like there there was none of that. You were out, you were out. Yeah. And hopefully you'd get back, but it's a yeah. different world now. So I guess, you know, I'll finish up with this. Um, you know, and I'm so excited that we we're able to do this. And I knew I knew it would be fun because I knew I was gonna really enjoy talking to you and just kind of picking your brain a little bit. Um, what are maybe like, you know, three tips you have for like budding entrepreneurs that are, you know, trying to figure out where to go if they want to get out there and do something for themselves? I would say definitely believe in your mission, whatever it is, whether it's business side, like I just want my freedom to be, to do what I want when I want, or whether you have something like I was really inspired about, about losing weight for the last time, you know, whatever your, whatever is inspiring you really really just own that. Um, the other thing I would do is, is find, um, find digital advisors. You know, there are Facebook groups and there are, like I said, there are, you know, I, I looked at a lot of different um, marketing companies before I chose one to um, learn from. So mm -hmm. find, find good advisors. And the other thing is a Marie Forleo quote, and it's everything is figure outable. Yes. So you just like, ah, oh, you just, you just say everything is figure outable and, and you just keep going, you know? Yeah. So she is awesome. I love yeah. her. She, Me too. She's great. Uh, well, this has been so much fun. I, I, yeah, really, for me too. I appreciate it. I really, I love talking to you, to you with the mindset that you have, the shifts that you have made. And I want to encourage other people, you know, 
there's a lot of people that, you know, oh, I didn't ask you one question. I always ask people, um, <laughs> why, why the great resignation? Because uh, I think people are, are leaving, you know, obviously. Yes. You know, my own opinion on it is that wages stayed flat for so long. And then people are like, you know what? I'm worth more than that. I because people did with, you know, some people got paid more on unemployment than they did working. Um, so that really changed their minds or they struggled financially. But then you find out, well, I can I can live poor for a little while. And then that gives you some motivation too. like, well, I don't have to be desperate to take a job. You know, I'm I, I can wait another month or two because I can keep my expenses low and I'm, I'm going to find the right job. And so it is interesting because even those, even people are, are getting new jobs, but they're maybe choosing a different field or just going to a company that treats them better, which yeah. I think is great. Yeah. I think that's huge. And that's, you know, with what's going on, so many people looking, looking for something new, trying to find their worth, trying to, you know, be paid what they're worth. I mean, yeah. I think at a certain point you become as an entrepreneur, and I don't know if you've experienced this yet, but you will, um, you become un unemployable. <laughs> the idea of having to go to someone and say, here's what I would like for you to pay me. Uh, it's like <laughs> hives, you know, <laughs> so, but it's, it's, it's a good thing because when you know your worth and you know, like I can work harder, I can do more, I can be more efficient. Yeah. I can figure it out. You know, I can create the next, the next level for myself, yeah. you know, yeah. my business. And so, yeah, I didn't even mention the explosion of online businesses. So <laughs> it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. But this is, you know, I, I appreciate the time to, to be with you, but also hear your perspective on health, but also like a healthy mindset when you're approaching your career and approaching how to excel in it, but also have the freedom and time. And, you, you know, you talked about having the um, being able to be more present, you know, with with your family. That's a huge thing. And I think a lot of people, a lot, especially women struggle with that. You know, I struggled with it for years. And so, you know, I just want to make sure that people know where to follow you. I think I can when I post this, I can. Um, put your, your Instagram handle or if they, where do you, where do you want them to follow you? You can just put my website up too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll put that one up. I'll put this one up again for you guys. So, you yeah. know, you can follow Heather at, um, at, you can find her on vibrantmd.com. Uh, this is for the holiday eating guide. Yeah. And then, you know, find her, her Instagram page. She's got a lot of great recipes there. She's got a lot of great stuff. And so I really believe that, you know, we came into contact for a reason and I'm looking yeah. forward to, to collaborating, but this is like a great talk. And I just want to yeah. make sure that you guys really. Same for me. I love what, I love what you're doing. And I love how, when you start out in the medical field, it like has its tentacles in your brain. And so everything is about health and it's so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, but I really appreciate you and this is a great, a great talk and I hope we get to do it again. And um, I just want to share with everyone, you know, look, you know, entrepreneurship is not an, an easy road. It's something that we all, you know, we all understand to some extent, but when mm -hmm. you get, go that direction, there is a level of uncertainty to it, but just understand that you can be inspired by the thing that drives you you know, yeah. and how you can make a difference for other people. So thank you, Jillian. Absolutely. Absolutely. So be inspired for a great life, everybody. Take care.